Welcome! This video contains an introduction, an interview so you can gain deeper understanding of the subject from spirit level, and a group frequency calibration so you can start to clear the frequency distortion patterns around this topic. Enjoy! Hi everyone, this is Karen Chong, and I'm here with my co-host Dennis Kelly. Depending on your perspective, these can seem like almost impossibly dark times. We're being impacted by a confluence of challenging events, and many of us cannot see a light at the end of the tunnel. Often, it is the darkest before dawn. In today's episode, we discuss why things are happening and how they can perhaps unexpectedly provide us with an opportunity to strengthen to harness our power, and like the mythical phoenix, rise from the ashes. After the discussion, we're going to wrap it up with a group frequency calibration to help to begin to clear the distortion patterns around this topic. So let's dive right in. Dennis? You know, the first question I've got for you, Karen, is that I know that you work with a lot of people uh, from around the world on a daily basis, and I'm, I'm just curious, are, are you picking up, are folks quite challenged by the darkness or the challenges at this time? Yeah, so it is a dark time, um, or it can be perceived that way. Um, it's also a time of tra transition and tremendous uh, change. And so I, I would say that people are um, finding themselves, generally speaking, depending on who they are, so depending on who you are, right? So the, the least able you are to hold your space, okay? So uh, sometimes this is people who are newer and they have more distortion, so it's harder for them. They can get pulled into what seems like the fray of what's happening in our political systems wherever you are in the world because it's not just happening in the United States um, and our financial systems and all that sort of stuff. And then some of the, and so there's a lot of them being pulled in. So we're dealing with that. Um, dynamic so they can get stronger. There's also this dynamic of people who have done more and are clear, whether they've done the work or just are more clear of in and of themselves, they are feeling a lot of change. So they're dealing with their physical bodies catching up in resonance to their spirit bodies. And um, everything's starting to vibrate and change at, that's coming in from a higher level order. So I would say that's happening because usually we have more than one thing happening at the same time, even though it looks dark right now and it does, and it can feel very turbulent and we don't know when it's going to end. This is actually a really amazing time because as I've mentioned before, we are releasing these darker, heavier frequency distortion patterns of oppression, control, abuse, greed, those types of things, which are are very, very permeated throughout all of our structures, this entire consciousness level, and even how we perceive the reality. And so that has to drop away in order for a new consciousness to come in. It is a time, because of all this um, change, like you said, it can look dark. The reason in part this looks dark is for people to have the opportunity to move up in resonance. Because really right now, many of us think, oh, we're free, right? Those of us in, um, who are in, uh, the West, in the West, typically, we feel like, oh, we're free, right? We don't, uh, there is, we are sovereign. And my, think, my question is, are we really that free? Okay, so meaning that there's a lot of control happening even interpersonally with a lot of people, right? So even in your families, within your friends, a lot of people will think it's out of love, right? Like, I just feel like this is best for that person, right? So they should do this. And often there's like an emotional manipulation to get them to do that thing. Well, that is a form of control. Trying to get someone to do something else, whether it's for your benefit or if you believe that it's for theirs as well, is a form of control. So that happens. Even between spouses, this happens, right? It happens all over the place. Kids, spouses, friends, family. It happens on the greater level, right? At work, where people have different agendas and they're jockeying for power, right? That happens. It's happening at the bigger level, like in our politics, right? You can see it interplaying a lot in the U.S. Uh, in our financial system, like all that, like with the coronavirus, we're seeing a lot of the troubles that are happening right now with small businesses is they can't 
pay rent. They can't pay back their debt service. And the banks are, you know, the ones that are causing the stress in a way, because if there was no debt, then people wouldn't be in this scarcity. They wouldn't be tr having to then put pressure on their tenants to pay them and then putting people out of business. You see, it's this cascade. So people are realizing that there is a lot of oppression and a lot of control in our systems. And they're claiming for themselves right now in a response to that, no, I don't want that anymore. I want to be sovereign. I want to be empowered, right? On the 3D level, I don't want that system anymore. So they're claiming their sovereignty from that level. And I know this is a long question, a <laughs> long answer to your question. I'm sorry, long answer to your question, but I'm getting there. But the point is not only to claim your sovereignty on the physical level, it's to claim the sovereignty on spirit level, right? So to free yourself from these distortion patterns that are creating this reality Okay, and also your experience so that you can rise up in resonance and experience things from a higher consciousness level. So that's my long answer <laughs> to your first question. I will draw breath now. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, I'll, I'll tell you what, you know, what I was thinking about as you were, as you were moving through that is that um, all these challenges, all these changes are happening on a lot of different levels. Yeah. Mentally, emotionally, physically, psychologically, spiritually. And so there's just a rush of change. And it can be quite challenging at mm -hmm. the personal level. Mm -hmm. Also at you know, at the at the level of your boss, at the level of the state, the federal government, whatever it might be. So one of the questions I've got for you, Karen, is as you were going through that, is you mentioned dark times. Mm -hmm. Can you can you see through the other side of this? You know, you talk about Phoenix rising. So is there truly a golden opportunity behind all this? Is there the yeah. possibility that we're going to be able to move through this? and mm -hmm. awaken and become aware to the level that, wow, we move past the greed, you know, the anger, the, the bitterness, the fighting. Mm -hmm. Can you sense and feel that? Yeah. So, yes. So that's why it has to intensify, actually, um, to in order for us to get to that place. You know, a lot of people will say it's often the darkest before the dawn. Yes. This is the darkest before the dawn. We're in that period of darkness before the dawn. And, I, and, you know, it's funny. That's a very human perspective. From a spirit perspective, this is awesome. Okay, And I, I don't mean to belittle like, the human experience. Because when you're in it, it's, it's, it's pretty horrible, right? It's stressful. It's challenging. It, it's, it's, it doesn't feel good. It feels scary. Okay? And, and you can have another thing happening, which is like, if you understand or feel or can perceive or be aware of that this is happening in order for us to claim our own power, our own sovereignty and rise above it to a new consciousness level. So as you said, what is happening after? Well, that's part of the sovereignty that we have to establish now in order to experience the new consciousness from a higher level order. It, part of it is claiming your sovereignty, okay? Knowing that you don't want to be controlled anymore. You don't want to control. This is not also, but this is not about the external. I know it looks like a lot of external stuff. This is internal, right? This shift as well, because we are claiming our power as creator, Okay, as the ones who create our reality. I realize that's a, it's a big jump for a lot of people when they're thinking, well, my reality sucks. Are you telling me that I'm creating it? I'm like, yeah, in part, the distortion patterns that are running through you are calling that reality to you. So once you clear those distortion patterns, I'm not saying you can do it necessarily when you're when you're like mired in all your distortion pattern, you know, and it's tough and you create more of the same yuck. Yes, as you release your distortion patterns, right, you start to clarify your resonance. And then as you get to a certain point, you claim your ability, your power, your sovereignty as creator, big C. Now, do you do this like right off the bat? I guess some people can. Uh, most people, it's a bit of a process. I'm not saying that we're going to instant on into the new consciousness, but you're going to start to find because we don't want to control or be controlled, that sovereignty is like a really big part of the new consciousness. There's less tolerance or no tolerance, really, for, do you see what I'm saying, of being controlled or controlling other. So that shifts the game. Because when that starts to happen, and people don't want 
to be controlled anymore. The systems around us have to be defined and created differently. So it is shifting. We will move into this new consciousness where there, those other distortion patterns will drop away. Will it be, it's not like um, a moment in time and then it just stops and it's binary. It's like one way it was this, click, all of a sudden we're in this new thing. It's because we're in linear time, there is a time lag, right? So even if something is set on spirit level, right? In the eternal now, we are in linear time, which is moving, right? So it takes time. There's a time lag for this to come through. As we move into this higher consciousness level, time will continue to speed up and it will happen more quickly. So if you've been noticing that time feels like it's speeding up, it is. It takes less time for more things to get done or to happen. And that's going to happen more and more. So even though this feels very intense and like it's never going to end, it's actually a very short period of time, really, in the against the scale of the all that is or the infiniteness of everything. So um, although it can feel long to us as humans, it's actually not even a blip in time. So yes, we are going to answer your question. Again, I'm taking my little meandering <laughs> course to answer your question. Yes, it is. Um, we are going to enter into this new consciousness. And depending on your, your where you are in terms of your resonance, this time is less dark feeling and more of like, it can feel crunchy. I'm not saying it's like necessarily e easy, even for those of you with a higher resonance, there are moments where you're, you're gonna have to clear stuff out of yourself, right? Like it's, it's not always easy. However, it's very rewarding in many ways because you're like lighter, clearer, different person and you keep moving, moving, moving. And what you can do is it really accelerate because momentum is really there for you in this time to release more and to rise more in terms of your resonance. So I've got, a, and I haven't quite figured out how to ask this yet, but uh, the, the question I've got is, so you, you talk about, you know, we are moving in the, this wave of consciousness and it is happening and that's exciting. And so, you know, it's very challenging from a personal standpoint. The question I've got, is there a tipping point where a certain percent of humans have to raise to a certain level so that do you know what I'm asking? Yeah, I know exactly what you're asking. Yeah. Um, we are moving. So this is not, um, so I'm going to answer your question a little bit differently than the way you asked it. So what is happening currently isn't a human phenomena if that makes sense. So we are experiencing it as humans, but the, the consciousness waves that are coming through are washing through the all that is. So meaning it's not just at this consciousness level. It's not just for humans. It's on all the consciousness levels for all the different beings that exist at all those different consciousness levels, whether you're human or not. So, so it's not really about what we as humans choose. So, so let me just let me just stop you there because I think I, a light bulb went on. So I think what you're saying is that this isn't our program. We're not driving this. It's like we're not, you know, it's not humans that, oh, you know, we're in phase one. We're going to move to phase two. Then we're going to move to phase three. Yeah. This isn't a human event. No. We're being impacted tremendously yes. as human. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Exactly. Go on. So, uh, exactly. So we're just part of a tiny part of the, everything that's being impacted. Exactly. So whether, so this is happening, uh, um, whether you really want to participate or not, it's happening. And, um, that is why some people will have even more challenge in this time because whether, depending on how much you resist this, right? Cause this is scary. Okay, so the human, if you're associating with your little S self, which we've mentioned in, other, in p previous episodes, I'm not going to go into that, it can be very scary. So you then hang on, right? So you're like, oh my God, I got to hang on to what I've got. I'm in fear, <laughs> right? You're just like, right? a lot of humans will even like stop breathing when they're in fear, <laughs> right? Because they're like, I don't, I, don't, I don't know what that is, right? And so we stop breathing, we stop moving, we go into the paralysis, we hang on. In this time, like I said, it's not a human phenomenon that's happening. This is a much greater scale than what we can uh, possibly perceive as humans. The best thing to do uh, for um, the most uh, forward momentum and the most um, benefit in terms of what's happening is to surrender, 
to let go and be like, is there something better than what I've been doing so far? Uh, has that really been helping me to control everything? Um, is it really making a difference? Am I really more empowered, more in control, or am I just freaked out and spiraling because I'm afraid? Is there something different that can be done? And that's going to happen for a lot of people. A lot of times in order for um, an awakening process to happen, it often can look like crisis just before because you have to get to the point where you're like, well, there's got to be something better than this. Right. And you and I have talked about this before, Dennis, right? You know, even before people talk to me, they have something that looks a lot like a crisis or something, which takes them to their knees, humbles them. And they're just like, whoa, I don't even know what's happening, but I know I need to change something. Well, that's happening on a mass scale right now. I had changed something. Right. And so um, that is what's going to lead to that claiming of the power and the sovereignty that I'm talking about. It's just kind of like the Phoenix rising. Right. So it looks like darkness. You know, that, that, that very mythical phoenix, like from the ashes rises the phoenix. It's exactly like this, right? Where it can, like out of the chaos, the turbulence, the fear, the rage, all that stuff. If you can hold your space and cultivate that and learn to do that and want to do that, because not some, a lot of people don't even know that they can even do that. However, that is that works. Right? I just talk about frequency work because to me, that's the, the fastest way to do that. Then you can, like the phoenix rising, spread your wing, wings and take off in this new level of consciousness. And again, this is not an instant on, right? For this to percolate through, we're in a time, uh, we're in linear time. It's not like in two seconds, you're going to like ping into the new consciousness. It's going to ripple into time for a little while, okay? Before everything shifts. Um, However, we are very firmly moving there, whether or not you want to or not. And as I've mentioned before, if, for those who hang on, and I'm not trying to scare people, but for, you know, the people will be exiting right now, like um, uh, their bodies and stuff like that. Whether and that's just part of their way of moving into the new consciousness because they don't know of another way. So a lot of people will choose to do that. Um, go ahead. So let let me ask you when sure. you when you talk about those conditions. And I don't expect you to have an answer with this, Karen, but I'm just kind of curious from a discussion standpoint. Um, do you think humans have ever experienced the magnitude of the way that we're experiencing at this time? No. I, you know, I think of, I think of you know, those that have gone before us. I, I just can't help yeah. but think that this is extremely unique. Yeah, it's extremely unique because before, uh, this is my perspective as I understand it currently, as I understand things currently. Okay, so I might talk about this differently in the future, just so everyone's aware. My, what I know or understand or what I can tap into changes. Right? So it's never static. So um, from what I understand currently, um, consciousness has been rising Okay, even though in the third dimension, it seems like we haven't progressed that much. We're like, really, have we er learned anything? We're still doing all these shenanigans. We're still trying to control each other. We're still acting very immaturely often, you know, or whatever. There isn't that much personal accountability, but it has shifted. I mean, if you think about it, right, like a thousand years ago, I mean, just think about the difference in the conditions of living. Think about people's ability to be, like, people were enslaved. It's, it's, it's I mean, physically, <laughs> right, um, uh, by class or whatever, like the conditions were much worse. So consciousness has been rising. The reason that it's never happened like this before is consciousness wasn't high enough, right? For, so it's all in perfect time. Like we all think like we're controlling all this. We're not, we're, it's all in perfect time. So consciousness has risen enough in this consciousness level to, for these consciousness waves, it's not, so it's, it's, it's kind of for us and it's not for us. We're part of it at the same time. It's both, right? So it's to rise, to raise consciousness up because we've gotten to a certain level of consciousness to allow for this ping to happen. It's both, meaning consciousness has risen enough. There is this consciousness wave that's pushing up, which then buoys us even higher. So we're not creating it, but it's, um, it's in the sense of like necessarily consciously, but it's like all these things are coming together at this point in time to allow for a much greater number of people to rise up in terms of consciousness level. Whereas before consciousness was much lower, much denser. So there would be a few that were able to break out and rise to a higher consciousness level, but it was harder for a greater number of people. That makes sense. And so they would move up, but not as much as we are now. So they'd notch up a little bit, but not at the same degree that we're experiencing currently. I don't know if that answers your question, but um, that's my perception. You know, the bottom line, you know, the work, the work that we're doing, um, 
it really gives you the opportunity to take advantage of this situation to the highest yeah. level possible. Because you could, you know, lock down and resist and just close down <laughs> and, you know, but, but with the work and the releasing the distortions and evolving and awakening and becoming aware and, you know, it really gives you the opportunity to really step into the game and be part of it. Like you say, Phoenix Rising. Yeah. So this is really, and we've talked about this before, Dennis, in this little series, but this is, um, and the reason we, we felt so compelled to uh, release this so soon is because it's important at this time to realize that we are moving from the little S self that we've talked about often to the big S self. And you're going to be aware of both. Okay. So the little S self, just to repeat, is viewing or perceiving from your ego mind only. The movement to the big S self means to be able to identify the experience or perceive or um, feel the experience from big S self. It's not like you get rid of the little S self, just to make that super clear. It's not about that because you're still human and you're meant to have, or you've chosen, not even meant, you've chosen to have this experience where things are intense physically, emotionally, mentally, right? That's part of what we're transcending, in fact. So you're still going to have that. You are also, if you choose to, move into the big S self, have that awareness at the same time. So it's actually about cultivating both awarenesses. Okay, from a point of stability. So without losing your mind, without getting pulled into dark realms, without whatever, you just have an awareness of both things happening at the same time. Not always, not at every moment of your day, but moments where you'll have, wow, like I can, I, I recognize that this is happening from a human perspective. I'm having this reaction of fear or whatever. And from the greater perspective, oh, I can see that I'm losing these distortion patterns, or I can see that change is really happening, or I can feel something else happening in the collective, whatever it is. Do you see what I'm saying? You have an awareness from a standpoint that's different from your little S self. So the more that you lock down, so based on your question before, the more you lock down, hunker down, close yourself in, the more you entrench into that little S self. You're like, no, I'm here in my little S self and I'm afraid or I'm angry, right? And then you're like staying there. That, um, that for many people will last for a certain people, period of time and then it can't be sustained, meaning something will likely shift where it causes them to go into a surrender from strength state where they're like, I don't, I don't even, I can't even do that anymore. There's nothing, none of that to hang on to. Well, if there's nothing of that to hang on to and I can't control anything and I have nothing left to lose, well, what else is there? Okay, now we're moving into the big ass self. Right. And that is that shift that is so important at this time. When you move into that shift to that big S self, that is when you claim your sovereignty, you start to realize your own power. I'm going to talk about power. Power in the past has always been over something in else, right? Over, like I said before, over someone else, over the environment, over, uh, animals. It doesn't matter, whatever, just oppression. Okay. Now power is from a much higher resonating order. Okay. And sovereignty is from a much higher resonating order, which means, and what I mean by that is like, I am aware of my connection only to pure source. I'm aware of my spirit body. Things can't come into the space between my spirit body and me. It's not allowable because I recognize I have an awareness of the magnific magnificence of who I am as an aspect of the divine. Therefore, I will not allow that to be violated, softened, uh, made less than by me or anyone else. I will not allow it. That is a huge shift in inner stance, okay, of like who you are. And when you can do that, you start to be able to claim your ability to be creator from the big, e, big C standpoint, okay? And I mean your ability to really truly recognize your ability, your creation abilities that what you are creating is in your reality is your reality okay and a lot of other things that we'll talk about some other time but this is what this time is for okay this is like you have said like the phoenix rising from the ashes this is what it is allowing us to step into so like the phoenix comes like majestic out of the ashes right it recognizes its own power it can spread its wings it's like this right we recognize our own brilliance we recognize our own power of our divinity and we won't let anyone transgress that. That's a very big deal. And so that's why this particular episode is called Phoenix Rising.
Yeah. Well, uh, you know, from a very personal standpoint, Karen, and be, uh, you know, on behalf of all your listeners, uh, I'd like to just say thank you for these podcasts and the information that you're sharing because this insight makes this journey so much easier, you know, to, to really truly be aware of kind of what's going on. Because without this, it's, you get very lonely and you get very lost. And so thank, thank you very much for doing this and providing it free of charge to the community. Thank you. Aww. Yeah, you're welcome, Dennis. And thank you. Karen, could you help me? I hear so often when I look at uh, your video or your website, GFC. Exactly what is that? A GFC is a group frequency calibration, which looks a lot like a guided meditation on a particular topic. And what I'm doing is I'm helping you to remove the distortion patterns of that particular topic. And because you're coming together as a mastermind in a group to connect to pure source even more and to clear the distortion patterns of this particular topic, what happens is a tremendous amount of momentum starts to happen because of the energetic of the entire group. And each individual is able to move faster and ascend higher than they could have on their own. Welcome everyone to the group frequency calibration for Phoenix Rising, Power and Sovereignty. The theme for this group frequency calibration will be power from a higher level order, meaning power that is not derived from oppression or power over something or someone else. Okay. So bringing your attention to your body. And as you bring your attention to your body, becoming aware of your weight as it settles into whatever is supporting you. Good. And now becoming aware of your belly. Just noticing if your belly is in contraction or is holding, or if it's at ease or if it's full, just noticing your belly, what your belly is touching. Mm -hmm. And now please become aware of your breath. At first, just taking the first couple of seconds to notice your breath without changing it. Allowing now yourself to elongate the breath. Do you have it become more full, more round as it fills your upper chest and your upper back? And perhaps noticing if you can allow your breath to drop into your belly and into your lower back. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. And now noticing your surroundings becoming aware of the smells around you. We get familiarized with smell very quickly. So noticing the smell as if it's new, leftover smells from cooking, 
smells from outside the window. Perhaps the smell of your lotion or your shampoo or the smell of your own sweat. Just noticing the smells around you. Good. And now becoming aware of the air around you through your whole skin. So becoming aware of the temperature, the texture, the movement of the air around you. Good. And now please triangulate. For those of you who are new, triangulating means becoming aware of three inanimate objects in the space around you. What those objects are is irrelevant. So noticing, for example, with object A, that is the coffee table, and you notice that the coffee table is about five foot away from you. So you're going to notice that and then feel the distance between the coffee table and you. And you're going to repeat that for objects B and C. And you'll notice that as you do this, your sense of where you are in space somehow clarifies or becomes more present or focused. Good. Bringing your attention now to the lower back half of your skull, in addition to your heart space, in the center of your chest, in your nipple line. As you become aware of these two spaces, and if you need to put a hand on each of these spots to help you with your focus, please go ahead and do that. If it feels easier to not do it, then don't do it. So with your awareness on these two spots, we're going to go ahead and inhale, holding your breath for a count of six. And then whenever you're finished with that hold, releasing your breath and holding it out for a count of five. We are waiting for the mastermind to coalesce. So as we do that, please note that I'm working on you at the group and the subgroup level. And that I'm often working on you in silence because as I access higher and higher level frequencies, to make physical noise only lowers the resonance, which does not benefit you. I may also make sound, so you may hear me hum or yawn or exhale sharply. And that's how I sometimes remove some of the stickier or uh, lower level frequencies. Yeah. So if I say something that resonates with you, it's likely yours. And if I say something that you really resist and it couldn't possibly be you, it's likely yours. So I invite you to be open and to examine further. <sighs> yeah. So now that the mastermind has coalesced, we're going to go ahead and ask ourselves the following question. How can I become even more aware 
of my connection only to pure source. And as you ask yourself that question, please imagine, sense, feel, or become aware of the space at the very center of your body. And as you become aware of or imagine this space, seeing, sensing, feeling, or imagining a brilliance at the very, very center of this space. And this brilliance begins to grow because you have your attention on it. And as it grows and intensifies, it expands outwards through all of your cells, out through your organs, out through your bone structure, expanding further out through your flesh and your muscles. radiating out through the pores of your skin into the space between your physical body and your the outer perimeter of your spirit body, which is a sphere at arm's length all around you. Becoming aware or imagining the brilliance within the sphere. Good. Now becoming aware of the space all around the sphere. And as you become aware of this space, I'm working on you at spirit level to increase your frequency resonance irrespective of where it began. This is one of the most important things we do because the higher your frequency resonance, the more effective this session, the more momentum you have on spirit level the more you can confirm, remove the patterns afterwards, because integration is smoother and easier. Good. Yeah. Becoming aware now, please, of your heart space in the center of your chest, in your nipple line, in addition to your brain stem, which is in the lower back half of your brain. So as you become aware of or imagine your heart space and your brain stem. The first distortion pattern that we're going to release is, depending on the subgroup you're in, a fear or distrust or a loathing or resistance to or discomfort with power, whether it's your own or someone else's. So this is a really deep distortion. Hmm. Hmm. 
Yeah. Bring your attention, please, to um, your lower belly into your upper belly. So meaning from your pubic bone all the way to the base of your sternum. Mm -hmm. So the next distortion pattern is uh, going to sound odd. However, um, it is what's coming up. And this is an attachment to the way the power is currently. So often when we, even if we see something we don't like, we kind of attach to those things because we're used to the way that they are. Right? And we also sometimes don't know that something better is coming. So we're afraid to let go of what is known. So let's release this so that something new and of a higher resonating order can come in. Good. Becoming aware of your heart space in the center of your chest, in your nipple line. So what I'm working on here is uh, releasing the distortion pattern of lack of trust. So lack of trust in self with power, lack of trust in other with power, just lack of trust okay, when it comes to power. Now this makes sense, especially given the way old paradigm power worked. But let's remove this so as we start to embrace, embody, and be the new paradigm of power, which has to do with and stems from our awareness of our connection to pure source. That things can shift.
p.m. Bringing your attention to the very center of your heart space. So this has to do with um, non-deserving of this new power, of the being the embodiment of this um, higher order of power, okay, or the new consciousness power. So let's release this. Attention, please now between your heart space all the way down the center front channel okay so just imagine a straight line all the way down to the top of your pubic bone giving you more momentum towards this new consciousness form of power. attention now please to your xiphoid process and about three inches or seven centimeters towards your belly button clearing out resetting and integrating your pain body This brings us to the end of this session. I look forward to working with you on the next GFC. These GFCs help people release distortion patterns. It's my sincere hope that you benefit profoundly from this series, which is why I spend so much of my personal resources creating these as my gift to the world. If a GFC topic resonates with you, often more work that can be provided in this one GFC is needed to really clear 
or loosen deeply held distortion patterns in areas that are sticky. Because these patterns are like layers of an onion, usually there are multiple layers to individual topics. Depending on how much of a challenge this topic is for you, it may make sense for you to go deeper than what this session allows. If you feel this is the case for you, please visit sphericalluminosity.com for more targeted support.